Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of Vool. In this video we're going to have a look at how we can split models apart efficiently, especially for 3D printing. So I had someone asking me for some help and effectively they wanted to brick a model apart for 3D printing so the bits would fit into each other quite nicely. Now we're going to have a look at this using this trench that we were working on previously. There's a link to the video where I've made this and what we're going to be doing is try to separate one of these supports out. And you'll notice this has a very specific shape to fit into just here. So we want to maintain that so that we can actually bring this together really nicely when we 3D print it and put the bits together. Now you might want this for other reasons but 3D printing is where I've sort of come from with this. Now, what this is not gonna cover is how to key this model so that it fits together. I've got a video on that. Again, there's a link in the description if you do wanna look at how you do that specifically. So this feels like it should be easy, and in many ways it is. You could just try and select all of the faces that are included here. So there, 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 and so on. But I've got these little rivets that are gonna be a pain to select everything. And while I could come into side view and then X-ray mode to start selecting these, what's gonna happen then is if I do that, because I've got all these lined up here, it's gonna select everything. So this isn't probably the way to do it. And I could select all these faces manually, but that's just gonna take forever. And this isn't even particularly complicated in terms of trying to do that. So let's go on to our first method. And I will say this isn't actually the best way of doing it and I'll explain why. But either way, this is a useful tool to know about for other reasons. So the first thing we could do is select the edges that we want to be almost like the joining part, the bit where we want to separate the models apart from each other. So I'm just using control and clicking to speed that up, which will basically follow along the edge as much as it can. And then there, and then have I got the one under here? No. So the first way we could do this is we could just go to select, select loops, and then select the inner loop region, which means we've now got everything inside selected. I could press shift and D to duplicate that, escape, but we've got these now points on top of each other, and then I could press P and separate by loose parts, and now I've got, well, this bit, and the rest of the model. But we haven't lost this, and if we want that to happen, what we're gonna have to do is come back in, select everything again, and then try and delete it. But we're gonna find, if I just do this quickly, that if I was to delete this, then we delete a lot of the faces we need to keep. And the alternative to this is we can press something like Control and minus, which will select one less, and then I can delete that. And that sort of has worked. So that's okay, and it will get there. We're just gonna have to fill this in, but you're gonna have to do that whatever way you go. But either way, it's definitely taking longer or will take longer than the method I'm gonna talk through now. Now, this does start the same way, but what we're gonna do effectively is tell Blender that for each edge vertex and then other vertex, and obviously this continues all the way along, what we want Blender to do is make a duplicate of each of these on top of each other like that, but not do that for all of the other vertices, let's say, for example, the ones over there. And there's a really simple way of doing that within Blender, into edge mode, and we're gonna do exactly the same thing of selecting all those edges by using control. So whatever you're doing, you're doing it this way to begin with. And then we're going to go to edge and we're gonna mark those sharp. Now for me, that turns this uh, yellow. I've just set it up that way because I want my sharp edges to be really obvious. And importantly, if you're gonna use this technique, you need to make sure the rest of your object has no sharp edges, otherwise this isn't gonna work. So what we're gonna do now we've got this is we're gonna use a modifier. And I just wanna explain what this modifier does and why it exists, because it's a bit of an anachronism. You don't really use it anymore or hear people talking about using it. So what I'm gonna do is bring over a cylinder, S to scale that up, and then we'll just have a look at this. So what this was originally used for, so I'm told, is that if you shade this smooth, you'll notice we get, well, it's a little bit messy, it's not particularly clear, and nowadays you go into your object data properties, normals and then auto smooth and suddenly it does this nice thing to the edges so it looks right but in the past this auto smooth option didn't exist so what you had to do is tell blender that we needed to split this up into its respective edges and you did this with the edge split tool and what that did is that it splits things by a certain angle and you can also click to do it with sharp edges or not and as we can see that makes this nice and clear and you've got your better shading but you do have the problem if we apply this that you then end up with these vertices on top of each other which in many instances is not what you want but in our instance it is so let's come back to our object and we've got our sharp edges just here 
that we want to separate along. So come back into object mode, add modifier, and we're going to go to the edge split. And then importantly, we want to take off this 30 degree one. We don't want that, otherwise it's going to split it up into too many bits. But we are going to have the edge sharp one left on, and we're going to apply this. And then what that's going to mean is if I go into, let's say, vertex mode and come here, we end up with, if I press G, two vertices on top of each other. And that means that when I come to, let's say, here and press L to select everything under that, I can press G and move these away. And you notice we don't have to reselect everything to get rid of what's there. And then I can do exactly the same thing of P and separate by loose parts. And now I've got my separated bits. Then it's just a matter of filling these in. And then for these ones, I should be able to just select them all, control and X, and that will dissolve that out. And then same for up here. And now we've got that. So we've got these parts separated and I'll just need to come into these and just add all those faces in. So it really speeds up the process. It just takes out that extra individual step of selecting everything to delete them again. And using that modifier is just a really quick way of doing it. So for splitting objects apart where you want a very specific fit, that's really helpful. As always, if you found that useful, if you could hit the like button, it really helps share the video around, so that's always appreciated. If you're not subscribed already, subscribe. And if you want more great content, including these videos ad-free and posted a week ahead of time, head on over to the Patreon channel. It's only $3 a month, and the support is really appreciated. Have a great day, guys.